worthless. Like you can't get into it. Like and financially, that is, you'll never make your money. Back. Or that you're just you're just being a bad salesperson, yeah. snake oil salesperson, snake oil. One hundred percent. And you're trying to sell a dream that's impossible. Ex right. Exactly. And I was exactly. disgusted with certain people are like that. Just like in any business, you know, you have the people that are good, and then you have the people that are bad. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel and we're bringing you a very unique video this time. We're talking about the ball python industry and investment, what it takes to make an investment in the industry. I think you're gonna find a very unique perspective on that because my perspective is, is that if you're buying a ball python, you're making an investment. And we'll explain why in the video. So we had a unique opportunity about two weeks ago. Miguel from Always Evolving Pythons. I'm sure most of you follow his channel. If not, check it out, it's awesome. Um, he was here visiting, we did some vlogging, we had some great conversations, and we recorded this sit-down um, talk a little bit about the ball python industry and what it takes to make it in this industry as a business or what it takes to make it as a hobby even. And I think you'll find that's a really, really awesome perspective. Let's get right into it. All right. All right, this is actually, are you ready Justin? Nope. This is actually the first time I ever do something like this. Let me get a little ready real quick. I think it's pretty cool. I, I was talking to Justin um, before I got here and I kind of wanted to do kind of like a Q&A between him and I. I wanted to ask him some questions and he has some questions he wanted to ask me. Um, the way this got brought up was I wanted, I always ask uh, Justin the business side of things because he's been so successful with it and a lot of people don't like really talking about it. So we're just going to touch on that just a very, very tight bit. But, um, I guess we can start off right now. Yeah. Ready? Want to go one for one? You want me to I go? actually asked him on one of my vlogs if he wanted to hear more about the business side of it. I was actually really impressed with just the number of people who were interested. So I think there's a lot of interest out there. There, you know, there there is, and I see it's more of like the, you know, I'm a new, I'm a, I'm pretty much a newbie into this. I'm like three years in, but I've noticed that the new people that are getting to are the ones that really want to know about it. Right. Uh, what I have noticed is the people that have been in it longer don't really like talking about it or they make it sound like I guess it'd just be very blunt like if it's worthless like you can't get into it like and financially that is you'll never make your money back. or that you're just you're just being a bad salesperson yeah. snake oil salesperson snake oil 100 percent and you're trying to sell a dream that's impossible Ex right exactly you know, just, exactly. just to be greedy just to make money so. I I pretty much you know um when I first got into it um I kind of was well Sorry, I'll edit some parts around. Um, when I first started getting into it, I kind of learned the hard way. But, you know, like in every other business that I have opened up, I kind of learned the hard way, but I think it actually helped me. Sure. Yeah, so. Sure, so what? So what's a mistake that you made early on that you feel like, um, you know, you have a different perspective on now that you've experienced oh, that? my gosh. Don't buy 20 males and five females. <laughs> That's like the number one thing. Everybody go out and buys a whole bunch of males at the very beginning. I will say this right now. The first thing that I, where I feel like if I messed up is that, you know, watching, you know, your videos, Brian's videos, other people's videos, is having the tubs and just being able to pull something that's very different from the one on top, from the one on the bottom, from the one on the side, just different variety of snakes, mm -hmm. was something that I wanted. Sure. You know, just to have 30 snakes and being able to feed them. And the males are cheaper too. So Way initially you're cheaper. like, oh, I can get the, I can, for the yes. same amount, I can get a lot more genes and, and stuff going on. That was way before I even wanted to turn into a business, right? right. Because right. I just wanted the whole snake stuff. But then I started seeing, started going to the reptile shows and started realizing, oh my gosh, people are really making a business out of this. And that's when I started switching over. And now that we're talking about mistakes is... In the beginning, I'm sure you've heard about this happening plenty of times. I got kind of conned a few times yeah. you know um, I think most people do early on it's yeah. really easy to be yeah. yeah really bad and to be honest man when I when that happened to me I kind of wanted to stop like right away I kind of was disgusted with you know the, the reptile industry in, in that sense you know but I just realized it was more just certain people are like that just like in any business you know you have the people that are good and then you have the people that are bad yeah. It takes a while to find out who those people are. You probably make some mistakes. Yeah, and in the process. still making mistakes here and there, but you yeah. know you learn every day. Um, yeah. But I wanted to ask you is if you had for all the new guys, new people that are you know getting into ball python hobby business, however you guys want to call it, what's the best advice you could give someone? Um, I think 
I've seen a lot of different people come and go in the hobby and in the business. I think more than anything, what's sad is when people get in and they don't last, right? Either in a hobby or in the business, right? Yeah. So I think I think the key to that is starting out um, and and taking it slow enough that you can grow as your interest and your learning grows. Yeah. Like you said, you you experienced some, you know, as, as did I when I first got in some problems with, you know, mistakes made, wrong people trusted, wrong project, you know, whatever. You're going to learn those early on. And so it's best to not learn those with a hundred grand right out, of the, yeah. right out of the gate. You know, if you yeah. can learn it with, you know, a, an amount that you're comfortable with learning with, you know, um, and, and then growing it organically as, you know, so you're not just growing production, you're growing customers and you're growing yeah. marketing and you're growing socials and interests and, and let those all things grow together as opposed to one side being jumped up with you know too much interest. You know, but also too, I think, um, I mean, I don't know if you could agree with me on this. I also noticed that some, like other breeders, you know, um, how would you call it, like veteran breeders, you know, sure. um, sometimes take advantage sometimes of some people, some sure. new people coming in and tell them, hey, go full on for us, so buy this, yeah. buy that. And I see it all the time, man. I, I was one of them. So I'm not saying that, you know, but I really was one of them. Yeah. But I, I don't feel comfortable talking about that business size because people obviously don't, they, in the reptile industry, it's like people won't give you the respect if you're a new person into this. You know what I mean? You, gotta, you have to be seen as paid your dues for before. a certain amount of time. Yes. Before, yeah. You know, I couldn't tell you, when I first started, um, and you know, I, I started investing a good amount of money, you know, stuff, but bought a lot of stuff from you. I couldn't tell you how much screenshots I've got of people that actually even acted as my friend that I was in some group chats with that would say, oh my God, this is going to last one year. This guy's gonna last no more than this year. He's never gonna make his money back. He's never gonna distance that. Yeah. And that goes to when the first time I actually bought some investment snakes I actually got from Justin. And, you know, so I can answer those two questions real quick. The people that were saying that I was gonna get out of this, the funny thing is they're no longer in it. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're, no, they're sure. no longer in it. And two, the snakes that I did put some like real investments into it. You know, I, I know a lot of people don't like talking about it, but Say, for example, I bought a snake. I'm just going to throw some numbers out there because a lot of people don't like talking about it. I have to. It just makes, Say if I bought a snake for me that was $5,000, right? I write everything down with what breedings I've done and what parents I've done. I've done something alongside to say $5,000 to you know, quadruple that amount of money in sure. that year and that season. Sure. And it does give you some confidence when you start investing some money into that to see that there is a really investment and business side into this industry. So what I spent a lot of time thinking about is the difference between somebody who spent $5,000 and is successful and the difference between someone who spends $5,000 and isn't, mm -hmm. right? Where, where does the difference lie? Because the 5000 being the same or the 1000 or whatever number, um, you know, learning what it takes, what's the, what the uniqueness of that is, and I think it goes back to in, in any kind of business, you have to be able to make the product you have to be able to let people know that you have the product, right? In this, in this case, it's snakes, but yeah. but you have to have several different things going at the same time. You can't just make it. You can't just sell it. You you and you have to be able to. It takes time for these projects to develop, right? right? You have to go from buying to to having the setup, right? So that there are no no major failures happen, and you have to go see it all the way through to hatching and keeping. And then being patient for the sale, developing the sale, the customer service, and that's just on one on one line. But then you gotta do it year after yeah. year after year to develop that. And so it's really the same. If I could make any point, is it's really the same as any business in the whole world. It operates in exactly the same. We're not in some kind of like different little world that's outside of the rules of. Yeah, you know how this works. So here's an, you know something else too that's always brought up. Um, people say there's no really no snake breeders out there that are making this, uh, making a real living out of this. Would you say that's true? I would say there's not many, but I can definitely say that's not true. Okay. Not one of them. <laughs> that is honestly thrown out a lot, man. And people yeah. think, oh well, you know. But it's funny the people that do say that. Um, it, I don't even know how to say it. But. Well, people usually when they make, usually when you hear stuff like that, um, it is people who are making sense of their own reality, right? They have found that they have not been able to do it. 
therefore, in order to justify yeah. or to make themselves yeah. feel better about their situation, they say, well, nobody else is either. They, they, they're denying reality, but it makes them, it's to, it's to address their own person yeah. in order to do it. You know, and, and the reason why we were doing this, like, I guess we call it a Cusco, uh, Cusco Uncut type of uh, talk is because I get a lot of messages. It's probably one of the most frequent messages I get about how do I start a ball python thing or what's the business side of it. You know, any little thing. I wish I saw this coming into it, sure. especially people that had already been following. Because um, I see now, especially on the social media, more people are coming in, more people are asking and stuff like that. And right. If there's anything we could talk about that'll keep you from doing the mistakes that I did or anyone else, I mean, that's why I wanted to do this with Justin. And who better than having this guy? I mean, he's done a great job doing it. Someone that I look up to and who has helped me, you know. And I could one say without, you know, no problem. I have invested some good money into this, but I have got a lot of it back. And now I'm in a position where I see how this is working, and it's amazing. It's only it's something. You know, it, it, there's definitely a way of doing it, that's for sure. Right. Another question I think people need to ask themselves when they get in is, well, what are they trying to get out of it? Are they trying to start a business? Or do they want to, do they want a hobby that pays for itself? Do yeah. they want a family project that pays in um, an amazing experience? And maybe that's the kind of payment. Like, what, what kind of investment that's so true. are they looking for? And so, we've kind of gotten out where people are afraid to say investment ball pythons because people are like, oh, we're too afraid to say that word. It's a bad word. But the reality, it, is, no, the reality is, even if you want it, I saw a lot of animals that are just like, oh, this is a father, son, or a family project. That's an investment. Yeah. That's an investment that's going to pay in a family uh, experience. A um, great investment. Right. It, it's a fantastic investment in that yeah. sense. Um, it's an investment that you're just going to do in a relaxed sense where you're going to make some animals and try to make a dream animal that you've seen but couldn't afford. That's an easy investment to hit, yeah. right? Can you make a living off of it? That's going to require some significant dedication, buy-in, yes. time, effort, and it's really going to come, to, it's going to come down patience. a lot to more than the financial number. Like You can just take that out of the equation. The whether or not you become successful as a business full time, it's going to be what's inside here, inside you, number one, because the amount of, of follow through it's going to take is going to be just astronomical. Yeah, um, that's why I say take it one step at a time. Yeah, kind of. It's funny, we had a conversation today about um, rat breeding, you know, something that I want to start doing. And right away, I was thinking, should I get this? Should I get that? And that's why I wanted to come and talk to Justin. It's just and tells me, no, I would start off with this. It's something I'm going to do a vlog about later when I get it. Start off with something very small, and then I can see how it goes, and then grow from there. But it's it's true, because if I jump in right away, like I did prior, like in the beginning of those things, you know, it was, it was a bad experience. If it goes poorly, that's where, that's where the, a lot of failures happen. Yeah. They just jump too deep too fast. Um, but it doesn't take a lot to really get the feet wet. It's hard to see how it works, and then start to, you know... Grow it as it as it as yeah. natural. Do you think um, having a, an honest, obviously, I, well, for sure, this works in any business, but an honest mentor in the snake hobby industry business, whatever you want to call it, is um, obviously it's helpful. But in this industry right now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is, you know, you you see on the social media. What I've noticed, and I'm sure you've seen it, is mm -hmm. you see more breeders and more people just dig at people and really belittle them. And it's kind of like they push them away more than actually comfort them. Sure. Yeah, yeah that's tough. And I, I think the hard thing would be finding someone who really has um, your goals at their in their heart. Yeah. That's the hard thing, you know. And I spend a lot of time talking to people, more time than I have, <laughs> talking to people, asking them, wait, what are your goals? How can we make this happen? Not my goals for you, but your goals for you, yeah. you know? Um, but there is a lot of toxicity, and it's partly because the industry is um, fairly close knit. We know each other, and we compete, and and I don't know. There's there's just a, there's just an underside to it's, it. You know, I try my best to stay out of it. Yeah, just, you do a great. Just you really do focus on amazing jobs. I have. I'll tell you a funny scenario. So I was just at um, Repticon uh, Atlanta, right? Great, great show, by the way. So if you notice on my blogs all the time when I go to a reptile show, I always do pe breeders. I always do right. tables. I always give everyone's information. Someone had told me, why do you shout out all these breeders? Um, or don't you want to sell yourself and your product? 
which I'm confident in what, what I'm going to be selling. So to me, I don't mind sharing other people's stuff. I don't think there's enough breeders in this world to take care of all the people in the world's needs with snakes. Yeah, absolutely. Injuries yeah. go way too fast. Reproduction, yeah. Yeah, and when the, plenty the and person told me that was kind of like, everyone, yes. like he was more bothered than I was, you know, but right. again, I enjoy sharing other breeders information and I always put it on the description down below. Like, by the way, I'm going to put Justin Cabela's information on the description down below. <laughs> but you know what I mean though, right? Yeah, yeah like it's, for sure. It's something they see happen a lot. And well, what you learn in business, and this is exactly what you're saying, is that you gain success by serving others, right? Yeah. And it could be by serving others by providing a product that they appreciate when they receive it and is worth the value they gave. It can be serving others in the sense of through social media, um, giving them a platform so that they can also be successful. The reality is that the more we can help each other and um, the more we can we can serve each other, the more successful you will yeah. be. Reality is the person who makes the most money is going to be the one who serves the people the best. 100%. If you, to, 100%. if you want to make more money, find a way to serve more people. That is so true. Yeah. So, real quick, so we, I know a lot of people always ask, and that, the reason why I want to ask you these questions is because you're going to be able to explain it a lot better. So, if someone is getting it started and say they're going to spend a certain, okay, then forget the money part. If you're going to tell them male female ratio, what do you recommend someone getting as sure. far as a, a starter ball, pipe, ball python So, kit? if you start from scratch, definitely start with girls. Okay, the reality is, is that if you look at the, the X's and O's, the numbers of it, the females will depreciate. They essentially have a three-year depreciation lifespan. Mm -hmm. Okay, So for the first three years from when you bought them, they will typically hold value until they get to an adult. Okay, At that point, they will only depreciate. I mean, they will depreciate at that point. Males depreciate as soon as they start breeding, essentially, yeah. okay? after six months or whatever. So what you essentially want to do is take and grab those, or grow up those girls, and then come through with an adult male later or a male later to breed them. It's hard to really explain in the format we have now why that works best, but essentially you're putting your investment away and then reaping the rewards later as opposed to putting a bunch of males on their shelf. They're going to depreciate when you can't use Got them. It. You can't okay. use them yet. And so they're going to sit there and every year they lose value. So um, that's, 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 that's from a financial side. Yeah. That side doesn't matter. And then once the time comes, you right. choose the male that's going to go best with all these females. Right. And then you'll, okay, got They're, it. The male is like the one who goes out and harvests your your um, investment. Yeah. Right? By making babies that are a, a combination of his value plus her, plus the female's value. Okay. Anything else you would want to say, you want to touch up on of the whole... I mean, I wish we'd ask for some questions because that would have been so really this, helpful. So this is right what here. we could do, you but, know. I know yeah. this the, the video here is, you know, really, um, how do you say it, um, mixed around with some stuff, but it's just, you know, um, we're just going seriously uncut. Yeah. But maybe what we could do is set something live and we could do a Q&A together, you know, would definitely love that. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. And do something like that. Well, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. And um, even if it's just we'll do videos separately or whatever, but you should yeah. them in future vlogs. There's a lot of information out there, there's a lot of questions out there, but um, I, th I think the big takeaway we want to leave you with, guys with is that it's possible to do with these animals what you want. It's possible to enjoy them, it's possible to have them as a hobby that pays for itself, or just as a hobby that, that is great for your family. It's possible to make a living with them, um, but all this is going to depend on you, how much you want to put into it, how much effort, how much money, and all the details, and uh, we can get drilled into it more you in know, the future. Yeah, we definitely can. One thing, now that you said that, I remember you had given me some advice in the beginning when you saw me do certain little moves and stuff like that, and I remember this, because I'm huge about it, but I just didn't take it really serious on the in the reptile side of it, is branding. Remember you told me branding. that you brand sure. yourself. Brand sure. yourself. And I had to switch a couple little things, but if it wasn't for that switch, yeah, it would have been bad for me, but I think that's huge. Just branding yourself completely as a big, big thing in this um, industry. Well, you know, people don't buy from people they don't know. That's yep. really, if you look at all the people out there who don't know you exist, they will never purchase an animal from you. It has, I'm saying this to people who are joining us in the business. Yeah. Um, so the reality is that you need to be visible and you need to be different or branded in such a way that people yeah. remember you. That's the basis for all for all sales. Really. And, yeah, and yeah. one thing I would love to say is if you have confidence in the stock that you're buying, 
dude, you'll be 100% fine. Don't let other people tell you, hey, that's not something you should buy. You should have bought this. You should have bought that. Trust me, I've been there, and I can't tell you, like, countless times, people have said, why did you get that? Why did you get this? Yeah. Trust me, if you feel confident at 100%, you'll be 100% fine. Yeah. You, you're not going to be able to sell something you don't believe in. Exactly. Right. You yeah. can't sell something that they don't believe in, that's for sure. But, you know, right. as long as you believe in it, you'll be fine. Absolutely. That's, so. a, that's a huge piece of advice right there. Yeah, dude, because I'm going back with the things that I went through. When I would get stuff, they're like, dude, why'd you get that for? And I'll be like, and it kind of gets you second guess, and you're like, right. well, you're right. But then you really think about it. Like, who's this guy really telling me that? Like, what has he done? Or what are, you know? So that's right. like to really go back and to really think well, about it. Well, you don't want to be living someone else's dream. Yeah, right? exactly. You don't want to be following someone else's idea of, of what will be good. What you know? Where's the passion in that when you wake up in the morning and you got to go clean 100 snake tubs yeah. to follow someone else's dream for what? So you know, true. What, so on. true. That's, that's so true. <laughs> come on, you know? I love that. Seriously. So I guess what we'll do is we'll, we'll leave it at that. You know, it's really cool, man. I like it. Um, and if you guys want to, you guys want to ask some questions, put it on the description down. I mean, put it on the comments down below, and then we'll we could either make another video, we could do a live, and we could answer them back, or you know, talk to Justin. We'll go from there. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thanks cool. for watching. Bye.